How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the difference between a digital manifold set compared to a wireless probe set. Let's get into it. This video is sponsored by RLS, original, patented, proven, and by Diversitech, helping you simplify your work. All right, so to start things off, obviously this is just the manifold. I don't have any hoses connected to it whatsoever, just for the video demonstration purposes. So when you buy this particular manifold, it's not gonna come with the wireless clamps that I have on here now. I actually added these on after the fact. It typically comes with pipe clamps that you plug in to the back side of the manifold. So I chose to go this route just because it's a cleaner look. You don't have the wires to deal with and um, I just prefer it. So you don't have to go that route. You can stick with the original clamps that it comes with. Um, the only other uh, uh, temperature probe that you would use is the uh, thermocouple for the outdoor ambient temperature. So one thing about this manifold set is that you cannot use a wireless, like one of these um, induct psychrometer sensors here. You cannot connect this to the manifold to be able to read your outdoor ambient temperature. So let's say you are wanting to uh, check your superheat. Well, you need to know what your outdoor ambient temperature is. So um, you have to hardwire, plug this in, and clip it to the, you know, the coil or, or whatever it is to be able to read the outdoor temperature. So keep that in mind. Other than that, the two pipe clamps obviously can be wireless like I have here. So <clears throat> going back to the manifold, this is really nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, spoiler alert, I think it's awesome to have both of them. They both have their place. Um, you know, one can outshine the other depending on what application that you're working in. And um, at the end of the day, it's just per personal preference. So starting off with the manifold, what I really like about the manifold is that if you want, you can have everything sent to here, to this display. So like I said earlier, you can't connect these for the outdoor air sensor input but you can connect these for your, your indoor, um, like a return temp and your supply temperature. So if you're wanting to read delta T or a temperature rise, you can connect these directly to your manifold and it'll give you the, the readout information on the screen. And I can show you that in a little bit later. So if you have these, basically two of them, <clears throat> and this set right here, you can connect and be able to uh, read superheat, subcooling, uh, the PT chart, depending on what, whatever refrigerant that you're using, um, and then also your temperature rise or temperature drop on your indoor um, furnace coil, air handler, whatever you got. So pretty nice uh, setup to have that. <clears throat> so if we dial into the actual um, manifold itself, you can press that and the light will come on. So that's pretty cool but you can go through all the different refrigerants. So like right now it's on uh, R410A. You can, you know, change it R22, R438A. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. It's got all the refrigerants built in. So you don't have to worry about trying to um, transcode what the temperature is gonna be versus the pressure. So it's, it's all built in here. It's pretty nice. Um, what's a, another feature that you can use Let's see here. First of all, let's go through view. So right now, we're showing outdoor air temperature, um, suction line temp, liquid line temp. So if I would to turn these on, we'll actually get a number here. And what that will do, if we were reading an actual pressure here, it would give us our, our um, superheat and our subcool that would all live right here on this screen. Now, if we hit view, that can, go through, we have a target number. Here's T1, T2, so that would be our indoor like return and supply temperature. And then we go back, cycle back through. So you can read again all that information that you need to know while you're hooked up to the system without running back inside to see uh, what your return temperature is. And if you're, let's say you're adding refrigerant in the cooling mode, you can automatically see your supplier temperature changing. You don't have to go back inside to remeasure. So it's all live measurements. 
I really like that about this. So you don't have to have a separate uh, like phone or iPad to be able to read all those measurements. Now you can if you want to, because this does have where you can connect their app. You can use the Measure Quick app. You can use the Field Piece app uh, on your iPhone or iPad or whatever uh, phone you have or tablet that you have. Um, and you can have all that information on there as well. I do recommend that because you can drill in and see a lot more data than you see on the screen. So anyway, going back to these, um, that's basically what you'll see. You can change your refrigerants and all of that. Um, if you want, you can also do what's called a test tightness. So what you can do, let's say you're pressure testing the system, you just repaired a leak or you're doing an install and you wanna make sure you don't have any leaks and you're pressurizing with nitrogen. Well, you can go into that test tightness mode and hit enter and it's gonna start counting uh, a timer and then monitoring your pressures. And it's gonna you know, tell you how much it's changed over however much time elapsed. So right now it's showing right here, zero pressure difference. So these are the two pressures if you were hooked up to the system. And this number is the difference between when you started your test to where it currently is now. And then you can let that go on for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you wanna run your test at, and it'll let you know. That's a cool feature, I love that. Um, what I've been doing lately is, and you can just hit enter to basically clear out and be done with that test. So I also been using the probe set, uh, setup to do pressure testing as well, because I could be in the van, you know, taking a break, eating lunch, whatever, um, which I guess, again, you could be doing that with this, but what I'm, what I'm kind of gravitating towards is the least amount of connections possible when you're pulling a vacuum or pressure testing is the best, right? You're less susceptible to having leaks with the least amount of connections that you have, right? So, I mean, you've got multiple connections. You've got three connections here. You know, these are all leak points right here where you connect to the actual machine itself is a leak point. So to eliminate all of those leak points, I kind of gravitate towards the wireless probes. So that's kind of a win there for me. But anyway, going back to the manifold, there are a lot of things that you can do with this particular manifold that I think is very beneficial to have out in the field. So um, that's the wireless on off. So if you want to use the app, you can do that. That could be a whole nother video. If you guys are interested, uh, let me know down in the comment section. If you want me to make a whole video just on the apps, let's say measure quick versus the field piece app and uh, dive more into the details of that. So not today though. But anyway, you know, in a nutshell, that's, you know, that's the manifold, right? You hook, hook up your set of your hoses, tell it what refrigerant you have, hook up your pipe clamps and, you know, hook up your, uh, your indoor temperature sensors here and then you're off to the races and you can start troubleshooting or diagnosing or charging, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, really good, solid. One thing about field piece products, um, they are very rugged and that's what I like about it. It's got this protective case all the way around. It's, it's you know, uh, waterproof. I don't know exactly what waterproof it is, but um, I've had it out in the rain and no problem whatsoever. Whenever you take this back door off and you're replacing the batteries, there's a, um, a seal in there. So you know this thing is pretty, pretty rugged and it's weather sealed pretty well. So, um, man, I've had this one for probably, I don't know, three, four years and it's still holding up nicely. It has a, a case that it comes with, a cover rather. And uh, so it kind of keeps it protected when you're not using it. So anyway, I'll set the manifold aside for now. Now, when it comes to this pressure probe kit, the wireless probe kit, you can get these in different sizes or different um, setups, if you will. Now, this is not the case that it comes with. I chose to swap out the case for this particular. This is made by Vito ProPak. Um, I just like how small it is and it holds everything perfectly. So right here, you can see I've got my, another set of wireless uh, clamps. So I like to have, let me put these over here. I like to have redundancy. So I don't wanna have to remove those clamps to bring them over here. I wanna be able to have everything that I need in this kit uh, to do what I need to do. So that way I can just grab this and go and I have everything that I need. So obviously I've got 
two induct psychrometers here, and I, I actually keep these things labeled um, SA for supply air, RA for return air. So same thing on the actual pressure probes themselves, high and low. Because when you're using the app, these have uh, number identifiers to them. So this is 0830. Uh, so in the app, you can actually uh, dictate what probe does what. So if you're working on a multi-circuit uh, system, you know, you could say, okay, this is the low pressure to circuit one, this is the high pressure to circuit one, and then let's say you have another set and you're doing the same thing. So you can identify what, uh, what probe is going to what. So I label them so I don't have to worry about thinking about which one's which. Um, with the pressure probes, um, I recommend having some way of connecting them to the system without connecting them directly like this. On the low side, no big deal, but when you're dealing on the high side with you know, 410A, a high pressure system, you're, you're gonna you know, hit that valve core and it's gonna spray out refrigerant and it's gonna freeze your fingers. You don't wanna do that. So I picked up a set of these, um, these are called core depressors. So they don't remove the core, you actually just turn this in and it has a depressor on the inside. So that's where it would allow pressure to read to your actual probe. This connects to the, your machine. You twist this in until you read pressure. And then when you're done, twist it out, boom. There's just a little bit of refrigerant right in here and that's about it. So this is a really nice thing to have um, really on anything when you're connecting, but specifically with these because you don't have any type of valve on here at all. So, or, or um, you know, um, we're the, more of the old school way of doing it, in my opinion, are the low loss fittings. Never really like those. So um, these to me are, are really nice. So I keep actually three of these. I keep two uh, quarter inch size and then one five sixteenths. So this is on your, on your ductless systems. So that one's dedicated for that. Now, if you look at this one, it's a different um, setup here. So this is set up for charging or removing refrigerant. So normally you hook these up, it's more for testing. You're just seeing what the pressures are and you can't really add or remove any refrigerant because you're just hooked up to the, to the port, right? So this gives you um, another port. So we utilize this depressor to hook to the machine. And then at that point, we have two different uh, pressure ports here. Obviously you can valve off there because there's no core in this one, but there is a core in this one. So the way that I do it is I'll hook up my pressure port to the um, side that has the core in there. I'm reading pressure on this one, and then I hook up my hose on here, whether it's going to a recovery tank or if it's going to a re, um, an actual um, refrigerant tank if I'm adding. And, that's, and, I, and I can either regulate the refrigerant flow with this valve here or the valve that's on the actual hose that I'm connecting. So anyway, this gives you an option to be able to add and remove, which is really nice. So, and you know, these are the same clamp probes that I have over here. And that's pretty much it. Everything lives nicely in this little uh, hard case, hard shell case. And um, even has a little clip here so you can clip it to your belt or to your tool bag, however you wanna carry it. But everything is packaged in there nicely. Close it up and you're good to go. So, I mean, that's pretty much it, right? Again, those are self-explanatory on how to use them. You know, the duct psychrometers, I typically drill a 3 8 hole wherever I'm wanting to insert it. And uh, pipe clamps, you know, clamp it to your pipe. What's cool about these, and um, it has the metal where it connects to the actual pipe itself. So if you're working on an old system where the pipe is kind of corroded, you can, or dirty, you can basically put it on there and you can, you know, do this with it. And that'll clean the pipe enough to get a good contact and then you'll have uh, uh, an accurate measurement at that point. So that's something to keep in mind. Or you can use some sanding cloth if you don't want to do it that way. It's up to you. So, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Pressure probes, we talked about those and how we connect those. Um, and really beyond that, it's just making sure, I mean, these are all digital, right? They're not analog. 
So you wanna make sure everything is zeroed out before you connect to the machine. It doesn't matter if you're using the pressure probes, um, the wireless probes, or if you're using this manifold set. You always want to um, turn on your actual uh, tool, whether it's those or these. Um, if it's the app, you zero out the probe, uh, the pressure probes, obviously. Temperatures, you don't zero out. The pressure probes you zero out on the app, or on here, you zero it out here. It actually has a button right there, it's called zero pressure. You just hold it down until it beeps and then they equal or they, uh, they zero out. And then you can hook up to your machine. So that way you know um, you're gonna have an accurate measurement at the end of the day. So that's the main thing. When you're using these types of tools, it's not like analog, so you wanna make sure you're zeroing everything out to where you have an accurate temperature. But that's pretty much it. Manifold versus a probe kit, wireless probe kit. Which one do you choose? Which one works for you? Do you currently have one? Are you wanting one? Let me know down in the comment section below. I'm interested. Speaking of below, check out the description. I'm gonna leave some links down to the True Tech Tools website. Pick up Manifold, um, the uh, uh, wireless probe kit, whatever works for you. Uh, use the code quality HVAC, you'll save 8% on your order. And that gives me a little bit of a kickback too because they are an affiliate program um, set up with them. So I will get a little bit of kickback on that and it does help the channel grow. So if you use that promo code, helps me out, really appreciate you. And you can pick up some really cool tools in the process. So anyway, if you guys have any questions about anything or if you want me to dive deeper into uh, any of these tools or the app like I talked about, um, let me know down below. Appreciate you guys. Give it a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.